I will talk about uh, relationship with, between uh, building information modeling and building energy modeling. Um, I've been working on a project at uh, EPFL, which stands for Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, which is a polytechnical school uh, of Lausanne. And uh, I worked in a research project, uh, which is a partnership between a private company and a public company, which is uh, EPFL. And uh, the, this project was uh, held by Laboratory of Numeric Culture for Architectural Projects. And uh, this uh, laboratory is led by, Ber by Bernard Cash, which is uh, here. And uh, the project is talking about how to use IFC for building energy modeling and uh, about the process and uh, why um, why I will be why this project exists exists exactly. So if you look into science, you will see that there is dozens of scientific studies. There is many, many, many. I uh, wrote some of them on the OSR wiki. So we might think, well, it should be solved, no? The answer is unfortunately no, but there is many good reasons for this. Um, if you look at existing, existing uh, softwares, you will see that there is 206 software reference on the building energy software tools directory. Um, and only 16 are referenced as open source. There is many well-known softwares like Energy Plus, but this one was designed at the start for the USA. So it can be adapted for other country, but you can often you need to, to do something. Uh, there is also the debug tool, which has an impressive range of uh, area, because as you can see on the uh, image, you can do uh, solar uh, studies, you can do delighting, the lights, you can do CFD uh, with open foam, you can do uh, uh, thermal ad analysis with uh, energy plus, etc. etc. So it's very wide, but uh, still, it's very good as a physical uh, software, but it's not uh, quite fitting, it's not. It, it not fit for uh, local standards. Also, there's uh, other uh, softwares like Decim. There is a there was an article on no research forum uh, lately, uh, which is about district heating and cooling. And uh, I will talk also about space boundary tool. It is open source but not liber. Uh, which means that you can see the code, but uh, you are not free to use it any way you want. Uh, and this is the issue. And uh, I'll explain later why uh, it could have been useful. Another topic uh, to understand why it is not solved yet is what and when. If you look on the right, this picture is uh, actually all the consumption of all the building of Geneva. Um, there is a, a website where you can see on a map all the consumption. What is in green is uh, when the building is uh, has low enough consumption to according to uh, standards. Um, not exactly standards, according to goals of, of the state, exactly. And uh, when it's red, it's really too much. Also, you can analyze solar energy, etc., etc. There is many types of energy. You can 
Um, the project state is also important because uh, when you are in the early phase, you don't you need to make quick uh, decisions. So, with a few information, you need to to have an idea of how uh, how much uh, energy your building will consume. Also, uh, there is often building permits which are involved, and it, it is a totally different topic because uh, here you need to be accurate, you need to uh, respect a standard, and you need to be certified uh, almost uh, every time. Uh, also, there is late phase with commissioning and optimization. Also, there is many different type of uh, simulation. You have hourly basis, daily basis, monthly basis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's a very different way to compute. And it's not the same uh, complexity and not the same uh, precision. Also, the time scale uh, matter a lot. Uh, you can, for example, for Heating and cooling load, you will more use a design day. But if you want to talk about energy consumption, you'll take a full year. Um, as I said before, there is a standard versus physical based simulation. Uh, standards are using physics, but uh, they are not pure physics based. So even if you have a software which uses pure physics, it will not be certified. And this is why you have many software which are great in this area, but can't be uh, used when you need a real certification. Because they did not uh, actually study and compared to other building and we need a common uh, ladder uh, scale to to compare a building with another and this is the main goal of standards during for this project there is a three main uh, standard we need to to take care of the first one is uh, 380 and uh, slash one, which is actually a monthly analysis of energy consumption. So what you care about in a wall, for example, you need to have the, the conductivity of each element in it. And also you need to compute with this conductivity the, the U value, which is the, for American people, which use R, uh, it's the inverse of U. And uh, you need to take care about how much sun goes inside your building. You need to take care about uh, the shadows, about the shading. And uh, you need to also take care about uh, thermal uh, bridges. Because, for example, if you have a wall which is uh, going inside uh, the insulation, you will not be uh, it will not be the same as a continual uh, insulation, so you need to take care of this. And depending on uh, how you measure, uh, there is a different uh, thermal bridges uh, values. It can be linear for a wall, but uh, for a column, it will be a punctual one. Um, this uh, standard is used for a building permits, so it's very strict and you need to use a certified software so you can you cannot use energy plus for example because there is no current certification for uh, uh, for these standards you have normalized uh, heating ventilation and air conditioning so you don't choose you know, there is no impact from this uh, area uh, normalized heat tap water consumption also and uh, energy reference area is approximately the area of a significant space uh, which consume energy i will uh, show you a little what i talk about i will try at least so 
if I take this building, um, what I care about is the sorry uh, is the area, the total growth area, and all the surfaces of the wall, the doors, and the windows the roof, etc., etc. It's a very simplified model. Uh, here I will uh, say it's not the model itself from, uh, it's not a real model. Uh, it's only the output of the of model. And that's the, what was important is this uh, project is that, for example, in, um, this model come from Revit. And uh, when I receive it from Revit, I receive something like this. And uh, the area, the surface here is the, at the middle of the wall. And uh, in Switzerland for the standard I was talking about, uh, I don't want it at the middle of the wall. I want it at the external uh, face of the wall. So this is something I do. Uh, according to IFC, I, I compute the external uh, surfaces. There is another um, standard which is uh, used for eating loads. So here we don't care about shading. Uh, we don't care about the sun because we only need peak load. So uh, very, the building is unoccupied and it is based on reference temperatures. Design airflow is uh, taken in consideration, so it is more precise. Uh, air tightness is also important and uh, you can't you count uh, it exchange between spaces and uh, it means that I need to know uh, for example uh, in this building I have a space here I have another space here I need to know what area is touching the other one and uh, this is something which is supposed to be uh, an, an information which is supposed to be inside the AFC file, but it is not uh, when it comes from Revit or Archicad. Uh, so this is something we do in our project. We uh, make sure that we know which room is on the other side and uh, to make relation between all the, the area. It is the same for uh, the space which are uh, separated by a floor. And uh, this is a Revit issue. Uh, we still need the outside boundaries for these standards, but what is supposed to be given in IFC is the internal uh, surfaces. And Archicad is doing this better than uh, Revit. Uh, if you look at what comes from Archicad, I actually received something like this. So this is the interior uh, area and surface of the wall. And what I need to fix is to make all the door and the window copladar because they are not. Unfortunately, for some reason, the, the, the algorithm is also doing something wrong. So a part of the project is actually fixing issues from these offering software. Um, but what I want at the end is the external boundaries. Uh, this boundaries uh, in IFC, it is called IFC World Space Boundaries. Um, yes, 
it's useful for energy analysis only uh, for uh, uh, over subjects there is first level ifc world space boundary which are simplified ones but for ifc world space boundary second level uh, the difference is that you need to separate each surfaces to know which room is on the other side to compute all the heat exchange between rooms another uh, standards which was uh, taken in consideration is the uh, SIA 2044 which is used for it is more interesting in some way because it is an hourly dynamic analysis so it is more complex this is the bad side but it's supposed to be to give uh, more precise results if you uh, if you uh, set it correctly so it is used for heating and cooling load but also for energy consumption but um, for energy consumption we don't use it for building permits at, at the moment because uh, it gives strange re results uh, easily if you don't uh, set it up correctly uh, but we we use it a lot for building permits for the the summer comfort. Uh, what is very important is that you have uh, solar protection. J just just checking. Do you still hear me? Because I don't see any. I don't hear any sound. Yes, fine. yes. Okay. <laughs> Say, stay calm and keep going. I was feeling alone. <laughs> You're not alone. We're all here for you. C'est bon, Cyril. Okay, I'll, I'll just continue then. Uh, there is also a relative balance, which is uh, which matter, uh, which was not taken in consideration before. It's how much heat uh, is dissipated and is taken from uh, all the wall. For example, because even the, at night there is actually radiative exchange, and uh, for a simplified model we don't take it in account. But for uh, a more uh, a complex model we take it in account. Also, uh, there is a um, specific capacity uh, and uh, density which are very important because it determine how much heat you can store in your uh, wall and for uh, summer comfort it's very very important and it is mandatory in Switzerland to have a minimal uh, uh, storage capacity for uh, it. Uh, you are not allowed to cool a building if you don't have enough heat capacity. Also, it is not allowed to cool a building if you don't have good uh, solar shedding. You need good solar protection. So, uh, because the first, it's really important. It's really a lot how much uh, energy you need to, to throw out. Uh, so, it's mandatory in Switzerland. Also, uh, for a residential building, you are not allowed to cool actively. Uh, but for uh, office, etc., you you are allowed to cool if you uh, respect all the required uh, values about its capacity, solar protection, etc., etc. Also about uh, lighting uh, consumption. There is many 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 uh, slider but what changed for these uh, standards also is that you need more accurate HVC and building automation behavior so you need to define it in your uh, data and uh, concerning our project we need both gross and net area so if I go back to my simple building I don't only totally need uh, the external face of a wall, but that I also need the internal face of a wall. Uh, to explain uh, this a little better, uh, for 
heating uh, storage. It is very important to have the interior of the wall because this is what is in contact of uh, your uh, internal air and uh, all the heat exchange are uh, around this. So you need the inside of the wall. For the uh, other standards, so what uh, all the here, when you dissipate uh, the energy, you, you more need the outside of the wall. But depending on the country you are working in, uh, standard asks you to measure the middle of the wall or the internal of the wall, the internal face of the wall. It depends on the country. Uh, if you look at the Switzerland, at, at uh, Germany, uh, France, Italy, they don't have the same standards. And this is what is uh, complex about it. Everyone has its own standard. Every country has its own standards. So you need to adapt uh, your uh, software to local standards. It, it is the main goal of a project, actually, to be able to use IFC to adapt data to local standards. So it, it is. Uh, as you saw before, there is uh, many uh, surfaces you get, so you be you are able to adapt it for many countries. But at the moment, it's only made for Switzerland. Um, first of all, I would like to thank a lot uh, Opening Design Office. Uh, which uh, made uh, Creative Commons uh, content uh, for their projects, so they are usable, and we used it for our project. And it made a great sample for uh, this project because there's many things inside of it which you don't see in big buildings. So big buildings are more simpler than this one actually so it was a great exercise to to use this we modeled it in uh, Articad and revit it is not the arctic architectural uh, model uh, this is a simplified building energy model what i will just explain i don't use uh, architectural model because there is too much information in it and at the moment it's too hard to to process it and for example if you look at the uh, the model from opening design you will see that actually each layer of the wall is uh, separate for it from each other and uh, for energy modeling it is very important to know to connect, to be able to know that all of the layer are one wall and to compute uh, the, the thermal conductivity. So this is why you, I would say 99% of the time you cannot use an architectural, arch, architectural model to, to make your energy simulation. Um, so it's about this there. As I said, there is many things we do not see everywhere. There is still some uh, glitch here in pink because the algorithm from uh, Revit is really not perfect. So we try to fix as many things as we can, but there's still some stuff we were not able to fix. And this is one of an issue, one of the issue I, I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, before I was talking about space boundary tool. Uh, space boundary tool is responsible for generating the boundary. So, for example, if you export from Archicad or from Revit, they generate if serial space boundaries second level or GBXML. You can export to both. But this algorithm is very imperfect and uh, it's really an issue because they don't output the same thing. 
at all. And uh, it is an issue. So that's why we struggle so much to to try to get uh, uh, something which is reliable. And um, at some point, it will be great to have a real open source uh, algorithm to do this because the only, uh, oops, sorry, uh, the only one which is uh, open source in, is not really open source as in free software uh, means. So you cannot use it for commercial, commercial use. Uh, so it is an issue. I also did uh, a real use case uh, during my uh, work uh, on, uh, in my own company because I'm a GEC engineer and lab coordinator on Vernier uh, D1, which is a project uh, near Geneva, uh, Vernier. It is a project from Lazica Maggi, which is a project manager and global contractor. It's about 140 apartments and about uh, 13,800 uh, uh, meters, square meters. Uh, about energy re reference, which, uh, as I said before, is uh, about growth area, but uh, you remove some uh, uh, space like uh, electrical rooms or uh, HVAC room, which are not uh, supposed to consume uh, heating or cooling because they are just technical rooms and, and uh, many things like this. So we used it to go from Revit. So I modeled all this. Uh, it's still an energy model, so it is not the architecture model. Then it's go to Lozosai, which is the energy analysis software, which is uh, in partnership with us uh, on this project. And so I was able to uh, perform building permit with it. And later on, I will be able to uh, compute the heating load per space. And um, I think that's all. Um, I can say more. Oh, uh, another detail. Uh, after the SSI gets the data inside of it, it can also uh, bring back the, the information, the data uh, of the wall uh, by IFC and BCF. So uh, you can copy the code, uh, the IFC code of the wall and bring it back in software if uh, your software uh, allow to open a single wall as a IFC. Um, it is finished. Do you have any question? If anyone's got a question, just go ahead or um, put your hand up. Maybe turn on your camera as well so we can see. So, Cyril, are there certain things that can be done in the um, current authoring software if you if you are using Archicad or Revit to make the model a better, more useful, or is it completely limited by that um, area boundary algorithm? It's very limited by the area boundary algorithm, but there's many uh, tricks to make your model better. And even an architect, if you, you read some of the studies, even some uh, model which were made by the same architect, uh, they the same architect did an architectural model and the, an energy model they didn't mix it because it's too hard to mix it. It's not really possible to have a reliable uh, output. Is that something that you see um, changing anytime soon? Like, do you know whether the Open I'm... Design Alliance IFC functionality that we all hope will be used more by Revit, for example, is that supposed to be better? What I hope at the moment is to be able to see 
FreeCAD or Belendo Breed and Madon being able to produce an energy model, which is not the case at the moment or not uh, easily, uh, to be more clear. And embarrass uh, the big boys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, if we get a better algorithm, uh, we could also uh, directly produce uh, the AFC world space boundary from IFC directly without generating it from uh, another software. So it could be completely separated from the offering tool. Uh, has uh, many uh, of uh, Blender BM Adam tool and IFC Open Shield tool are, are made uh, right now to be able to disconnect each other, to be able to work on both FreeCAD, Blender, or uh, Archicad, and Revit, and mix all the stuff. But um, yeah, at the moment, uh, my best choice uh, is to model it in uh, Revit or Archicad. But I am a Revit user. Has anybody else got a question? Yes, I have a question. Uh, do you think that the topologic uh, library, let's say, could help uh, identifying uh, geometries, intersections, and stuff like that? Uh, this is uh, something I was hoping, but I, I'm not able to tell if uh, if it is the case. Uh, one of uh, my colleague of the laboratory uh, thinks. Sorry, Phil, is... could you just could you just tell everyone what topologic is? Um, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that put you on the spot. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> Topologic. There is a thread on uh, At the bottom of your page. There, it's right there. Bottom of page. Ah, oh, yes. Great. So, if you want to take a look at it, you'll be able to see a previous presentation from uh, Vasim, who presented topologic, and uh, it's a tool. What I understood for it, it's a tool where you can start from minimal uh, volume and then you can uh, make relation between uh, elements and then build your model on top of it. And what uh, Bruno Postel was able to do is very impressive because it generates building from a mass. And uh, thanks to to Pologic, everything is related. So you know which uh, wall relates to which space, and uh, which roof relates to which space. You know which uh, which space is on the other side of the wall. So I think it would help. Uh, it could help, but. I'm not able to to say. I just hope so, and uh, I will be. It would be great if someone which understands both uh, topology and what uh, Bruno Postel do uh, would be able to work with us on it on uh, this topic because uh, uh, at the moment it's way above my head. I, I just can't say. <laughs> okay, thanks. We've got some other questions. We might have a we might have a job, Cyril. Um, I don't think we've documented on our wiki um, best practice for for making Revit and Architect Revit and Archicad models for energy modeling. Have we? No, uh, no. This is something I need to do. Uh, okay. But uh, there, we did something during this project on uh, Archicad, and but it, it is in French, so I need to translate it. Well, somebody needs to translate it for some of us. <laughs> but um, yeah, the rest of us can just uh, learn French. So <laughs> if any, if anyone has some time and they want to get involved in understanding uh, that topic, that would be a great way to help us. Uh, expand the wiki and um, and get that information in front of people. Do you have anything else you want to you want to say before we move on to Thomas's presentation? 
Yes, just uh, one thing. Uh, there is also already uh, someone which started to work on this topic. Uh, it is uh, Adria Gonzalez-Steve. Uh, pardon me if I don't pronounce it correctly. <laughs> uh, there is a, a topic somewhere about it. Energy somewhere. Anyway, uh, if you need to know, let me know. And uh, it's somewhere on the forum. And I think on the wiki, you and I have both started looking at ways to organize the pages that that have something about energy modeling and environment modeling. So we're trying to organize that again. Mm -hmm. Welcome to help us with that. And I think you're getting involved in some of the um, international building smart work on developing yes. standards for this uh, stuff. Yeah. Yes, so uh, they are trying to uh, make a better version of uh, AIC because currently, uh, if you take a look at what I said before uh, about in IFC, there is only two types of EFC world space boundary defined. One is for the um, uh, building uh, commissioning so it's not for energy and the second space boundary are for energy but it's only the inside face of a wall and you can make some additional surfaces but it's not really meant to but it's doable also there is no thermal bridges in ifc so uh, there is no class for thermal bridges also, maybe it missed some uh, parameters. So there is a study which has been uh, made by Building Smart, and uh, I will participate in the expert panel uh, to analyze it and uh, to try to uh, make a better version of IFC. And uh, I hope then we'll we'll have. All we need to for energy analysis we'll still can uh, make an object but it will not be uh, a thermal bridges so you need to do some uh, custom property sets custom uh, your ifc class will not be very custom not very specific and uh, stuff like this okay so there's lots of stuff happening slowly Let's hope so. Yeah. Thank you very much, Cyril.